بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى وهو بالعفك الأعلى ثم دنا فتا المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد نبي الامي الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الى يوم الدين let me start with a story that we all know uh, the story of Hubayb ibn Adi who in 625 that is three years after the hijra was ambushed with other companions and eventually he was uh, 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 betrayed and uh, 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 given to the Quraysh who tried to humiliate him and uh, they were ready to kill him and he asked them to allow him to do two raka before he was killed and as he was being killed he had only one sorrow to express the sorrow that in his own words nobody was there to take his salam and his blessing to the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the story is that Jibril Alayhi Salam then took the message to the Prophet who was sitting with his companions in Medina. And the Prophet at that time said, Wa Alayhi Salam Wa Rahmatullahi. That is to say, he returned the salutation and the blessings that Hubayb wanted to send him. Why do I recall this story in my uh, uh, presentation? Because I believe that there is uh, one important lesson in it. The Prophet وسلم, wanted before he lived this word, to make us absolutely certain that the word according to which when we pray upon him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels pray upon us. When we say salatu ala nabi, we are blessed with 10 times the blessing that we call upon him. He wanted us to make sure that this was indeed the case. So while he was alive, his companions could witness that someone being killed near Mecca <coughs> was sending blessing and him sitting in Medina was returning the blessing. So this was a lesson for us. This is what he wanted us to <coughs> know uh, uh, for sure about what it means to, for us to obey the injunction that we know comes from the Quran. Inna Allah wa malaikatihi yusallula ana nabi ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasliman. When this Quranic injunction that we pray upon our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was first revealed, it was troubling for the companions of the Prophet. How can we do that? How can we obey this injunction? What are the words that we could find that would be words that correspond to who you are, Ya Rasulullah? How can we do this? And again, as usual, he taught them. He said, well, then say this. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. You have many different variations in this uh, prayer on the Prophet known as Al-Ibrahimiyah, but they all amount to the fact that 
this prayer asks for the blessings and the graces of Allah to come to the Prophet and to his people the same way they came to Ibrahim and to his people. And this is something I wanted to insist on. Because why? Why did he, uh, let's try to understand what is the meaning uh, of revealing this particular way of praying on him and calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessings on him. Why this attachment to uh, 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 Ibrahim alayhi salam? Why this insistence on being kin with Ibrahim alayhi salam? There are many testimonies in our tradition and in the Quran that show actually the importance of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam for our deen and for our prophet. First of all, let me give this example. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu uh, 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 says that one person came once to see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was so enamored with him, so enthusiastic about seeing him because that is what he did to human beings, that he exclaimed in his presence, Ya khair al bariya you, you the best of creation. And uh, uh, he says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Thalika Ibrahim Alaihi Salam, the one you call the best of creation, that must be Ibrahim Alaihi Salam and not me, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. That is one thing that he said uh, uh, that shows, of course, what we know about him. This profound, his deep humility, but also, also the status he gave Ibrahim in his, uh, 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 in his thinking and in his teaching. Second element that also shows the importance of Ibrahim in his life. This is a well-known hadith. Uh, narrated by Aisha, who is radiallahu uh, 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 anha, who, who is the protagonist of this story, she said that uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told her once, "I know when you are happy with me, and I know when you are unhappy with me." And she said, "Well, uh, how do you know?" And he said, "Well, when you are happy wi with me." And you swear, you swear, la warabi Muhammad. And if you are unhappy with me, you do swear, but you swear, la warabi Ibrahim. So in the first case, you swear by the Lord of Muhammad, that is me. And in the second case, you swear <coughs> by the Lord of Ibrahim. And the Prophet smiled, and Aisha said, well, yes, indeed, you are right. The only name I cannot renounce to is the name of God, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one second aspect of the particular relationship he had with Ibrahim, and that would start explaining the Salat Ibrahim. The third point, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named the son he had <coughs> with Maria, the Coptic slave that was given to him, Maria al qitbiya as she is called, after he named him for uh, 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 Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. As we know, he had three sons, Qasim who died, and Qasim gave him his kunya. Abul Qasim was one of, one of his name. He also named a son after his father, Abdullah, who died as well. and uh, 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 and. This Ibrahim, who died, some say, when he was 18 months, others say when he was 21 months. And we know the story of actually the sadness of the Prophet when, he, when his son Ibrahim uh, 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 died is well known. When he was shedding tears without crying, without crying, saying that it would be it is normal for the eyes to shed tears. 
and the heart to be saddened. But of course, they will not say anything but thank the Lord. As you know, as we know, as we should know and uh, uh, remind ourselves, when something good happens to us, we say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. When something not so good happens to us, we say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hadin. Anyway, that is one third point uh, uh, insisting on this. And I remember, Alhamdulillah, when I went to pilgrimage to Mecca and I was doing the ziyara of the of the of the uh, um, cemetery in uh, in Medina uh, as you know uh, uh, the all shrines and tombs have been erased you have nothing but sand and you know uh, 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 stones here and there indicating that this is and when our guide told me that this was uh, uh, the the actually where Ibrahim was buried that was the moment when I was the most emotional in, during my stay in, in Medina because what came back to me were precisely those words of the Prophet wasallam when he was burying his child and when there was that very day and that is what allows us to date it actually when we look at astronomical time because there was an eclipse, solar eclipse on that day and the Muslims started saying well you see your sorrow is such that the, uh, uh, the cosmos is actually sharing it. And as we know, the prophet f stopped quickly that kind of say, saying that the sun and the moon are signs of God and they do not undergo eclipses uh, for the birth or the death or any of anybody. This is again, again, what the prophet taught us about humility and about tawakkul uh, and, and, and giving ourselves to, uh, but the point, the main point actually, that will explain, I believe, the uh, Salat Ibrahimiyah, would be that Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, is the figure par excellence, as we say in French, of monotheism. He is the one who gave the name Islam. He is the one who was the quintessence of what is called in the Quran, Deen Hanafi, the, the, the way in which we are really uh, uh, understanding the oneness and the uniqueness of uh, uh, God. As the Quran say, Millata Abikum Ibrahim, huwa samakum al Muslimin min qablu wa fi hadha. He is the one. The, the, the community of uh, uh, your father, your father Ibrahim. He is the one who named you Muslim before and in this revelation as well. In other words, he is the one who really coined the word Muslim that we are now claiming as our own name. Islam is not just the religion that appeared roughly around 610. We know that the Prophet ﷺ was born around 570. And if we accept the tradition according to which the age of prophecy is when he was 40, that leads us to around 610. And 610 would be the date of birth of <coughs> Islam as the positive religion that we know and that, uh, inshallah, we belong to. But prior to that, Islam, the simple way of making peace with oneself and therefore making peace with God. That would be the best translation, this surrender, surrendering to oneself in, a, in order to surrender to God, would be a much better translation than submission that uh, uh, is usually uh, used. Because if you translate by submission, you would not understand why the root of the word would be salam. So you have to have a translation that uh, uh, actually includes the word peace in your translation. So Islam is more the normal, primordial, natural relationship that the human being has vis-a-vis -vis his or her creator rather than just a religion that was named as such in 610. What Ibrahim did was restore precisely that natural relationship that the created human being has with his or her creator. 
And that relationship is what is called Islam. In that sense, Islam has always been there ever since our father Adam and our mother Eve were created. And what Abraham did was restore that pure faith, that pure nature, the fitra of the human being that explains his or her attitude vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he is the one who created the name Muslim for us. So I believe that now if we look at all these stories that we know, we may understand why when he was asked about the Salat al-Nabi, that was the Quranic injunction, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam offered the Salat Ibrahimiyyah. Because he was saying that I want for my community what you gave to Ibrahim and his community. He has always thought of himself as an imitator, a descendant, and an imitator of uh, 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 Ibrahim. So one story shows us, we know in the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that uh, 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 when he was not yet a declared prophet, when he was just Muhammad al-Amin, as his uh, uh, um, uh, people in, in Mecca called him, this was a time when Quraysh decided to rebuild the Kaaba. They destroyed the, the old, uh, uh, um, the old uh, walls that were there and started rebuilding things anew. Then raised, as we know, was raised the question of putting back Hajar uh, 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 al-Aswad, the, 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 the stone, the black stone. And they started, as they do, usually uh, uh, fighting about that. <coughs> and we know in the, the seerah of the Prophet, it is said that he settled the dispute by asking them to lay down a mantle. He would put the stone on the mantle and all the tribes, the representatives of the tribe would hold a piece of the mantle and raise it at the level of where the stone were to be placed. That story is well known. The one aspect of that story on which I want to insist is the fact that he is the one who took with his beautiful hands the stone and took it back where it was. He repeated, he imitated the gesture of Abraham. He was at his time what Abraham was at his time when he and his son Ismail built the Kaaba. So that was the announcement of what Islam, our religion, was going to be, the restoration of the Hanafiya, the restoration of the Islamic faith of uh, uh, Ibrahim uh, alayhi uh, 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 salam. So that is uh, uh, the point I wanted to make surrounding this Salatu ala Nabi, which is the Ibrahimiyah. The fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thought of himself as an imitator of Ibrahim was a way for him to teach us what it meant for us now to be an imitator of him, <coughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In other words, in other words, this relationship of imitation, this relationship of reproducing the qualities of somebody is the lesson that he wanted to teach his community, that is to say, us. What did he want to teach us? It is say, he said, that he did not come to bring a new religion. He came to restore the Abrahamic faith. And he also came to complete the good qualities of human beings. In other words, his teaching was a teaching of what it means to be a human being. We believe that being a human being is a state. We were born human beings and here we are, we are human beings. I don't think so. I think that the lesson of our religion is that being human is a task. We have to become human beings. We are just the promise of our humanity and we have to fulfill that promise. We have, in other words, to be complete, to be what is called in the Islamic tradition in San Kamil, the fully accomplished human being. And that is what he was. 
he was the fully accomplished human being. Our uh, uh, brother, beloved brother who, who, who left reminded us of the passage in the Quran where God himself says, you have these beautiful, this excellence of character. He, he didn't say, you are so knowledgeable, you are so this, this or that. He said, you are such a noble character. And that is what we have to imitate in him. He has to teach us what it means for us to be fully accomplished human beings. The whole lesson of the Quran is a fully, thoroughly humanist lesson. Let's not try to meditate on the essence of God. We can. But when we say that we are imitating the prophet, that makes sense because he is human and fully human and you know that the Quran insists so much on his simple humanity. God said that if he had wanted to send an angel, he would have sent an angel to an other angels. Since he was sending a prophet to us, he needed to send a human prophet to us. And that is what he taught us. As human, this is what you have to do to become fully who you have to be. <coughs> and that is, I believe, the meaning I wanted to share with you about uh, 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 imitation of the prophet and the meaning of the Ibrahimiyah. Nimoko suni Imam Bubahbi Imam Saho. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. One Najami the Hawa Madwalla Sahibukum Wama Gawa Wama Yantikuanil Hawa. علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى وهو بالعفوك الأعلى ثم دنا فتدى